Hi everyone, my name is Sean. I know you've met some of my colleagues in the last two workshops. I also work at ICANN Health and Fitness as a mental health and wellbeing practitioner. How have you found the topics you have completed so far? Don't forget they include mental wellbeing, mindful versus mindful, how to be more mindful, catastrophizing and coping strategies. Feel free to pause the video now to discuss. Today we are going to be looking at emotional resilience. To help me with this topic is my friend Rezi. Rezi is our resilience mascot. Get it? Rezi? Resilience? Rezi is going to help us all learn how to become more resilient throughout today's session. But first, do you know the meaning of emotional resilience? Pause the video if you would like to discuss this. Resilience means you can bounce back from something. For example, if you fall off your bike and get back on it again, that is resilience. It means you learn to manage or control yourself despite being in difficult situations. Emotional resilience. The ability to calm your full mind after encountering a negative situation. This means you learn to adapt your thoughts and feelings in the face of challenging circumstances. Can you think of an example of being resilient? You can pause the video here if you want to think about it. Achieving goals makes you feel more resilient. Being in control of your feelings makes you more resilient. Laughing and being kind makes you feel resilient. Exercising and keeping active makes you also feel resilient. Making a mistake and correcting it makes you more resilient. Mistakes are important as they teach you lessons in life, so make sure you learn from them. Talk to the person next to you about something that makes you more resilient. We have given you three minutes to complete this activity, but of course you can always pause the video if you need more time.
You have about 15 seconds left, but if you need more time, feel free to pause the video now. Now we have established resilience is the ability to be able to bounce back from something negative. Let's look at what we call the seven C's of resilience. We will use Resi to give an example of each one. Competence, the ability to do something successfully or efficiently. For example, Resi can successfully play chopsticks on the piano. Confidence, the feeling or belief one can have faith in or rely on someone or something. I have confidence that Resi can always make me smile. Connection, the act of linking one thing with another. Resi has a connection with every member of the ICANN team. Character, the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. Resi is devoted to helping others improve their health and well-being. Contribution, the part played by a person or thing in bringing about a result or helping something in advance. Resi contributes daily to the ICANN team. Coping. Dealing effectively with something difficult. Resi copes really well with living away from home. Control. The power to influence or direct people's behaviour or the course of events. Resi influences people to live healthier lifestyles. Well done! You have learnt the seven C's of resilience. Can you say them with me again? I will give you the description of each one. Can you shout out which of the seven C's it is? Ready? Here we go. The ability to do something successfully or efficiently. Competence. Well done. The feeling or belief one can have faith in or rely on someone or something. Confidence. You're doing great. The action of linking one thing to another. Connection. Great job. The mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. Character. Great work. The part played by a person or thing in bringing about a result or helping something to advance. Contribution. That was a tough one. Dealing effectively with something difficult. Coping. Great work. The power to influence or direct people's behaviour or the cause of events. Control. Great job. You have earned an I can be resilient point. Well done. Once you realise you have the ability to be every single one of those C's, that's when it gets so much easier to cope and control your mind in these types of circumstances. Let's go over some good characteristics that will help you manage difficult situations. Positivity. Having a positive outlook on life and situations. Instead of focusing on the negative of an event, why not try looking at the positive points instead? Flexibility. To be able to agree with someone if they are right, even if you feel you don't want to. High self-esteem. This is being self-confident in who you are, your skills, abilities and yourself as a person. Non-judgmental mind. You do not know everything that is going on with another person, place or even business. By not being judgmental, you are not feeding others with negative thoughts and feelings. Mindfulness. This was covered in your workshop with Sammy and Meggie. Do you remember? Take the time to refocus on yourself with mindfulness and deep breathing to achieve desired outcomes. Talk to the person next to you about which of the characteristics you think you have. We have given you about three minutes in this video to complete the activity. But don't worry, you can pause it here if you need more time.
you have about 15 seconds left, but don't worry, you can pause the video now for more time. I think I am mainly flexible. I can change my way of thinking to suit the situation I am in. For example, when I am with my children, I am fun and silly. When I am at work, I am confident and a team player. I am positive. I love smiling and making people laugh when I see them. For example, I slithered into the park the other day and I saw some kids. I smiled and they smiled back. We made an immediate connection and that made us all feel at ease. Has that happened to you? Lizzy is also very self-confident. They are happy in their own skin. Lizzy's skin changes colour as they learn. Look, we will show you. Lizzy is learning about mental well-being. Lizzie has finished learning about mental well-being and their skin has changed colour. Lizzie is learning about mindful versus mindful. Lizzie has finished learning about mindful versus mindful and their skin has changed colour again. Lizzie is now learning about catastrophizing and coping strategies. Resi is finished learning about catastrophizing and coping strategies. They learned two topics this time and their skin has changed colour twice. I wonder what colour Resi will be by the end of today's session. By developing self-confidence, you will have the strength to move forward and take what you need to get where you need to be. How can you become more resilient? How can you Build more resilience for school and in a workplace. Try and include these in your daily life. Remember to sleep well. We covered this in our second workshop. It is super important to get a good night's sleep. It's more important than you think. It can boost your immune system. It can help you have a more positive outlook on life. It will help you to concentrate and focus better. And you will have more energy to exercise. Learn to manage your stress. Do you remember our glitter jar from the first workshop? We hope you still have it and use it on a regular basis to calm your mind. Eat healthy. Healthy body, healthy mind. We will talk about eating healthy in more detail later on. Become more active. We will also try and help you with this a little bit later on. By taking care of your mind and body, you will be able to cope effectively with challenging situations that occur in your life. Don't allow negative thoughts to bring you down. It is best to override negative thoughts and think positively. A fantastic way to do this is with some exercise. How about we all try some now? We are going to try some simple standing and sitting exercises. So join in if and when you can. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Stand up if you can. Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm going to take you through some exercises. Let's start with our head. Turn your head from side to side. Try and stretch through your neck. One more time to the right. Well done. Now let's try down and up. Pushing your chin towards the ceiling and the floor. Well done. Now let's try shaking our legs. Give them a good shake, lift it off the floor. And the other one. Well done. Go on, you can do it. Shake, shake, shake. And now shake your arms. Your whole arm. Shake, shake, shake. And the other. Shake, shake, shake out to the side. 
And now shake your whole body. Whoa! Shaking your arms, shaking your legs. Let's have some fun. Okay, time for some marching. Can you march on the spot for me? Use your arms to help you. Big march. Well done. Let's get that heart rate rising. Can you run on the spot for me? Run, run, run as fast as you can. Well done. Running fast, even faster. Great job. And now, time to get your knees up high. Up as high as you can. A bit like a football player. Up, up, up. And now, can you kick your bottom? Don't actually kick it, but just get your feet as high up towards your bottom as you can. Well done. Thanks so much for joining me. Let's try some exercises sitting down now. Ideally, you need a chair with a backrest if you can. Join in if you can. Pause the video now if you need to get a chair with a backrest. OK, firstly, let's get you seated correctly. Make sure you can see the screen clearly. Your feet are flat on the floor. Your feet are shoulder width apart and facing forward. Shoulders down and relaxed. Back is straight, either resting on the back of the chair or however is comfortable. Bottom is at the back of the seat. Take some time to make sure you are seated correctly. Our first move is called the heart rate raiser. We are going to come back to this move after we've done each other move. This just helps to keep your heart rate raised throughout the exercises. Okay, so what we're going to do is march your feet on the floor. Lift one leg, then the other in quick motion. Kind of like you're marching on the spot. Swing your arms to increase your heart rate. We're going to try and march for one minute. If you want to make it a bit harder for yourself, swing your arms faster and lift your legs even higher. If you need to make it a little bit easier, that's okay too. Just make your movement smaller and slower. Are you ready? We're going to count the minutes shortly. And go! You're doing a great job. Let's keep going. Keep marching on that spot. Let's get that heart rate raised. You're all doing such a fantastic job. Keep it up. We're at the halfway mark. Only 30 seconds left. If you're struggling, make those movements a little bit smaller and a bit slower. If you feel like you can go harder, swing your arms faster and lift your legs even higher. 10 seconds left. We're doing great. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and stop. Great job everybody. On to the next move. Hope you're ready. Our next one is called closed shoulder stretch. Now. Sit with your back straight, shoulders down, and bring that tummy in. Imagine you're holding it towards your spine. Cross one arm over the opposite shoulder and pull your elbow backwards towards your face. As tight as you can. Make sure not to lift your shoulders, keep them down. 
Hold the stretch for about 15 seconds and take some deep breaths. And then we're going to swap sides. So get ready. We're going to count the first 15 seconds shortly. Ready and go. Feel that stretch in that shoulder. It's five seconds gone. Nearly there. Five seconds left. Great job. Now, get ready to swap sides. Are you ready? Steady. Go. Great work. Ten seconds gone. Five seconds left. And relax. Let's do that first arm again, just to make sure we've got it right. You're going to be experts by the end of this. You ready? And go. 15 seconds. Some deep breaths. Take some big deep breaths for me, please. Five seconds left. Nearly there. And relax. Great job. Now we're going to swap back to your other arm one more time, just to make sure. And here we go. 15 seconds. We can do this. Come on. Deep breaths. 10 seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one. Great job. And we're back to the heart rate raiser. Do you remember this one from the beginning? We're going to march your feet on the floor. Lift one leg, then the other in quick motion, just like you're marching. Swing your arms to increase your heart rate. And we're going to try and march for one minute. Remember, if you want to go a bit harder, swing your arms faster and lift your legs higher. To make it easier, make your movement smaller and slower. Are you ready? We're going to go for that minute in four, three, two, one. Let's go, 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 go. March on the spot. Remember to keep breathing. Keep it up, keep it up. March, march, march. We're doing great. We're almost at the halfway point. Come on, you can do this. Push, push, push. That's great work. Keep it going. There we go. We're halfway now. Halfway. You can do this. Remember, to make it harder, make your arms go faster and lift your legs higher. To make it easier, make your movement smaller and slower. We're nearly there. 15 seconds left. Come on, you can do this. Great job. 10 seconds. We're nearly there. Nearly there. And 5, 4, 3, Two, one. Great job, you can relax on that one. Next movement coming up. Okay, this one's called the lat stretch. You're going to sit nice and straight in your chair and put your arms up, bending at the elbow. Put one hand on the opposite elbow and pull your arm towards your head to really feel the stretch. We're going to hold the stretch for about 15 seconds and again, Take some deep breaths and then we're going to swap sides. So we're ready with that first arm. Let's get it into position and we're going to stretch for 15 seconds. Remembering to take those deep breaths in five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Let's do them first 15 seconds. Great job, everybody. Really pull it. Just feel that stretch. Pull as much as you can. Three, two, one, and we're going to swap sides. Great job, everybody. Let's swap to the other arm, get it into position, and we're going to go again for 15 seconds and some deep breaths in three, two, one. Here we go. Don't forget to breathe. It's five seconds already done, nearly there. And five, four, three, two, one. Great job. 
Once again, we're going to swap sides, just to make sure that everybody's got it. Okay, swap to your other arm again. Are you ready? And five, four, three, two, one. Don't forget to deep breathe. Really take those deep breaths in. That's 10 seconds. And five, four, three, two, one. And once again, we're going to swap sides. Last one on this move. That's great. Get it into position. Are you ready? And we're going to go in five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Final 15 seconds on this move. Come on, you can do it. Great job, everybody. Deep breaths. And five, four, three, two, one. And relax. And we're going back to the heart rate raiser. You are all going to be experts on this one soon. Are we ready? Just to remind you, march your feet on the floor, lift one leg, then the other, in quick motion. Like you're marching, you know this already, don't you? Swing your arms to increase your heart rate, and we're going to march for one minute. Don't forget, you can swing your arms faster and lift your legs higher if you want to make it that little bit harder. If you need to make it easier for yourself, that's okay too. Make your movements smaller and slower. You may change it up each time. That's fine. Anything you need to do to make a fun and safe exercise. Are you ready? We're going to go for our third one minute heart rate raiser. Get ready, get into position, feel it in three, two, one, go, go, go. Fantastic job. Keep marching on the spot. March, march, march. Lift those legs. Swing those arms. Come on, you can do it. Getting that heart rate up. Should be feeling a little bit warm. Fantastic job, everybody. You're doing great. We're halfway there. There's another 30 seconds to go. Keep marching on the spot. Come on, you can do this. I have every confidence in you. We're nearly there. 15 seconds left. And 10, 9, 8, 7. Keep it going. 4, 3, 2, 1. And relax. Great job, everybody. We're going on to the next move shortly. This one's called the leg lift. What you're going to do is place your hands on your knees. Raise your right leg in the air, extending no further than knee height, just to knee height. Hold for as long as is comfortable and take some slow, deep breaths. Then you're going to put your leg down and swap legs. To make it a little bit easier, lift your leg a little off the ground and bend your knee a little as well. That's fine. Whatever you find to be easier for you. We're going to start with the right leg first and I'm going to give you a minute but it's fine if you need to put your leg down sooner and you can swap your legs more often than everybody else. Are you ready? We're going to start in three, two, one. Raise your right leg in the air. Come on, extend it just to the knee. That's great. Hold it for as long as it's comfortable for you, remember. Remember to take those slow, deep breaths. Breaths in. Hold. And release. Deep breaths in. Hold. And breaths out. Take those deep breaths in, hold and release. 15 seconds left. And we're going to swap legs. Five, four, three, two, one. Great job. Give that leg a little bit of a shake if you need to. That's great. 
And get ready, we're going to go onto your left leg. Make sure you're back into your right position. And get ready to extend that left leg for the minute or as long as you can. That's fine. And we are going to go in five, four, three, two, one. Lift and extend. Here we go. And remember your deep breathing. Slow, deep breaths in. Breathe in. Hold. And release. You're doing great. Breath in. Hold. And release. You're all doing amazing. Come on, we're nearly there with this leg. Got 15 seconds left if you can make it. It's fine if you can't. You do as long as it's comfortable for you. Don't forget your deep breathing. And we have five, four, three, two, one. And relax. Give that leg a little bit of a shake before we move back to the heart rate raiser. You know what's coming next, everybody. Heart rate raiser. Let's get the heart rate back up. We need to keep it up, keep it going for all these exercises. Quick reminder, although I'm sure you are an expert by now, march your feet on the floor. You're lifting one leg, then the other, in quick motion. Swing your arms to increase your heart rate. And then try to march for about one minute. Remember, if you want to make it harder, swing your arms faster and lift your legs higher. To make it easier, make your movement smaller and slower. Okay, we ready? Let's get that heart rate back up in five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. March on the spot. Let's go, go, go. Don't forget to swing those arms. Keep them swinging if you can. That's it, you're doing great. That is 15 seconds already gone. Come on, let's march. March, march, march. You're doing great, let's get that heart rate up. Great job. We're over halfway now. No stopping now, no going back. Let's keep it going. 20 seconds left. Come on, you can do this. And we're at the 10 second mark. Come on, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Come on, you can do this. Let's keep going. March, swing, march, swing. And three, two, one, and relax. Wow, fantastic job, everybody. You have completed our standing and sitting exercises. Really hope you've enjoyed them. Well done. How do you feel now? I feel very warm. You better get some water to cool down. Pause the video now and get a drink of water if you can. Great job, everybody. You've earned yourself an I can be more resilient point. Well done. And that's not all. You've also won yourself an I can exercise point. Fantastic job. Great work. Now, do you remember we said we would talk about the benefits of healthy eating? Well, let's think about food for thought. A large percentage of your health and well-being is down to what you eat. You may think you are healthy and strong, but are you? Everything you eat will either make you feel better or feel worse. Food is fuel. Food is medicine. Let's change our attitude to food. Some top tips 
for eating healthier. You should eat when you are hungry. You should drink a glass of water before you eat. Sometimes you are just thirsty. You should stop eating at least three hours before your bedtime. You should eat more protein and vegetables. If you are eating from boredom, do something else. Change your mindset. Focus on something else. Think before you eat. Do you really want that? Will it make you feel better? Have a little break after eating half your plate. Are you still hungry? Do you feel satisfied? Take a look at this diagram of what happens when we eat sugar. It's kind of like a roller coaster. At the bottom, you eat some sugar, here on the left hand side. As the sugar enters your body, you then get a sugar high. This is when you get a boost of energy from that sugar, but very quickly it plummets and your blood sugar levels fall rapidly and you start craving more sugar and so you eat more and the process repeats in a never ending cycle. As you saw from the roller coaster diagram, when we eat sugar, we get an artificial sugar high. But what happens when you get this high? You may get a sense of confidence. You may get some excess energy or moments of hyperactiveness, making you feel more resilient. But when the sugar high disappears, we start to crave more sugar. And when the sugar rush goes, what are you left with? Perhaps the opposite feelings? Maybe you have a loss of confidence, unsure and questioning yourself. You have a lack of energy and you feel lethargic, tired, sleepy. Talk to the person next to you about how you think sugar affects your ability to be resilient. We have given you three minutes to complete this activity. But of course, as always, you can pause the video if you need more time to talk.
you have about 15 seconds of your time left. But as always, don't worry, you can pause the video here if you do need more time. Eating a healthy, regular diet of good food and water can help you maintain a level mood, a clear head and a consistent mood. Do you think that would be good? I do. I like feeling in control and knowing how the food I eat affects my body. Let's play a game to make sure we all understand. Rezi and I will show you some food and drink and you have to guess how much sugar is in each. Are you ready? Here we go. Pause the video here to guess the amount of sugar in each. Rezi and I will tell you the answers shortly. You can use grams or you can use other objects as an example. Your products are apple juice, baked beans, a bar of chocolate and a bag of sugary sweets. Pause the video now. Get those guesses in. Hi, it's Lisa again. Are you ready to tell me your answers? I can't wait to hear what you've got. The apple juice weighs 107 grams. Wow, that's about the weight of a lemon. Baked beans have 40 grams of sugar, about the weight of two AA batteries. In a bar of chocolate, we're using Mars as an example, there are 30.5 grams. That's about the weight of a fountain pen. And finally, in a bag of sugary sweets, there are 95 grams of sugar. That's about a weight of a mouse. What foods could we swap these out for to help our resilience levels? Perhaps we could swap them for some fresh fruit, some seeds, and nuts, and even some popcorn. What would you swap them for? The more resilient and confident you become, the more you will succeed. Even if you do come across setbacks and challenges, remember, change is natural. Change can be good, embrace change, and learn to accept change. Thank you all so much for joining Sammy, Meggie, Matt, Rezzy, and myself on our journey towards being more mindful, coping well, and becoming more resilient. You have all been incredible. And look, Rezzy has added a new colour to their skin. They have learnt about resilience with you today. How amazing is that? Please come and meet us in person at our centre anytime and follow us on Facebook. We cannot wait to meet you. All the details you need are there on the right hand side. Keep well, keep safe, goodbye for now.